Yesterday, today is going to be the greatest day of your life. The Bible says, forget those things that are behind you and press toward the mark for the calling of Christ Jesus. Listen, whatever hurt you yesterday, whatever caused you to cry yesterday, whoever turned on you yesterday, today is about to be a transformation. God is about to do something great things in your life. Just believe it. Let us pray with me. Our Father in God, we come in a powerful master's name of Christ Jesus. I'm asking for you to turn it around, Lord, that you help us forget those things that are behind us and help us forget those things that hurt us. Forget those people who walked out on us. I pray right now that God, you will help us in the midst of a pandemic. Let us be the people of praise, not the people of problems. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Tell, I want you to tell somebody something good is getting ready to happen. <laughs> something good is getting ready to happen. I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Shout glory after all you're going through. Shout glory after all the hell we've been through. Something good got to be on the rise. And all the trouble we've been through, something good is getting ready to happen. I'm so sorry, y'all. Y'all don't know me. I don't know y'all. I'm so sorry. I just embarrassed myself. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. I ain't come from Virginia Beach, Virginia, just to sit in my car. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. He didn't have to let me live, but he did. I said I won't gonna tell nobody, but I just couldn't keep it to myself. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What is wrong with you? All he did was wake you up this morning. All he did was clothe you in your right mind. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Amen. Get your Bibles, get your Bibles. Go to Hosea. Allow me personal privilege to take the moment I didn't come by myself. I don't know y'all like that, so I can bring back up with me. I am a product of a grandmother's prayer. I thank God my grandmother is here, Deaconess Joyce Nichols from the Mount Sinai Baptist Church. My granddaddy is here, the chairman of the deacon board, Deaconess Deacon Nichols, and my family is here. God, to God be the glory. Look of Hosea. Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Hosea. Once you found it, say, I have it. If you can't find it, say, Lord, help me. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <laughs> the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So he went into Gomer, the daughter of Nebariah, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said to him, Call him Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and it will cause to seize the kingdom of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass at the day that I will break the bow, of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, him Call her name Lo Rama, for I will no longer have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God. It will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now when he said, Now when he weaned Lo Rama, she conceived and bare a son. Then the Lord said, Said God, call his name Loani, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. I'll let your neighbor turn to my sermon title, The Kids Are Going to Be Okay. The Kids Are Going to Be Okay. I got the look that I got 20 minutes. My formal band partner looked at me. He was like, yeah, it's time for you to get it rolling. We don't got that much time. The kids are going to be okay. In this world we live in, 
Kids are scared for their lives. We have domestic violence going on. We have rape, we have assault, and many much more. It has gotten to the point where kids have started killing kids. We have kids, young adults, dying over things that shouldn't be taken this far. We say black lives matter, but we kill our own folk. I feel so bad when it comes to George Floyd Child. She was just a little child and has to attend her father's funeral. I feel horrible for children who have to watch their fathers cast their clothes on them. You just don't know the pain that they feel. 2.5 million children are homeless around the world, but by the grace of God, I still believe that the kids are going to be okay. In the text, the book of Hosea chapter 1, Israel is in a backslidden state because they have opted to worship many false gods, as opposed to being faithful to the God who has been their redeemer. God at this point is considering to dispose them, wash his hands of them, or even just turn them over to the enemy. As a last resort, he has enlisted his prophet, his servant, his preacher Hosea as a living testimony of grace. And he orders Hosea, the pastor in town, to marry a prostitute because that's how he feel his relationship with the nation of Israel now rests that he's sleeping with someone who is tricking. He's connected to somebody who's uncommitted. Imagine how God feels he calls worshipers whores because they in fact will worship him on Sunday, but by Wednesday they're back in the lottery line. What do God feel about us that we are unfaithful, that we were shot about him at church, but we, but we are silent about him at corporate lunches, where we refuse to bow our heads to say grace, where he's the one who gave us our job in the first place. He tells Hosea the assignment, what many of us wouldn't have to face too much. He says, I want you to take on somebody who's in poor, even while you live, for a reverse suit of chapter one, and it's what started. He says, I do not just want you to marry a faithful woman. I want you to take on her children because they are children of adultery. I need to wake up the church in the city today because you need to know that the call of the church is not just to minister the children who go to our church. The call of the church is to minister to children who has no respect for authority. Or the call of the church is to minister to children who are angry but don't know what the issue is. The call of the church is to minister to children who reject moral values and discipline. The call of the church is to track down the children who have no goals, no dreams, who have no fathers, who has no fear, who has no education. The call of the church is to go embrace children who have tattoos, piercing, who has lost their minds on drugs. The call of the church is to not be afraid of the children we're supposed to discipline. The call of the church is to go to the street corners and not just minister and embrace the children who are lovable, warm, and fuzzy and know the 23rd Psalm, John 3, 16, that's sitting with braids and lace fronts and wigs. But the call of the church is to go get those children who wear their pants behind their draws, who don't have their hair done, who have tattoos on their lips, who believe anybody who corrects them is a threat to their humanity. The call of the church is just not to applaud the little babies of the children choir and to say it's nice to the kids who get the college scholarships, but the call to the church is to go down Green Bar Mall and tell them you are still loved, you are still valuable. We see the glory of God that is on your life. The call of the church is to go to that teenage girl that 13 don't even want to be a girl but wants to be a boy. The call of the church is to embrace the 15-year-old who already has two children and another one on the way. The call of the church is for the younger man who feels his manhood is only defined by a gun in his pocket and going to prison is a badge of honor. The call of the church is to go to the children who don't even think church is an option. That graduation is only something that durable. That college is even something that's attainable. The call of the church is to go get your nieces and nephews, your godchildren and your neighbors who won't even speak to you. And it's time we live in an age that 70 year olds are being beat and raped in parks when those are our grandmothers and our children don't even have sense to honor those in fact the badge is to the corner of our community. The call of the church is for you not to come to church and feel comfortable and sit here there and arise if the favor is just on you. The call of the church is when I hear the benediction, I won't stop driving because I don't even have to go a block to the hotel on that corner and shake that girl and tell her there's more to your life than some stripper and some pimp and some John had told you, but you are fearfully and wonderfully made. The call of 
of the church is to understand that God has made us to be rulers and not to be joint heirs and not to be beneath but above. Unless you forget, if it was not for the grace of God, you would be one of those children. If it were not for the grace of God, you would be on a lost or on a street corner. Yeah. Hosea marries a prostitute named Gomer and they bear a son. And the Lord says, name your son Jezreel. Jezreel is the northern city of Israel. At the time of our text, this is the, cap is the capital where kings live. And God has given a clear message to Gomer and Hosea. Raise your sons to believe he's supposed to be a king. Raise your son to believe he's supposed to have authority. That he is supposed to give orders. That he is a leader and not a follower. Raise your son to understand him that the potential to shift nations and to set policy and impact economies, raise your son to understand that he is not NBA number or Ron Wade, that he is not looking for somebody to give him a relationship advice. Give your son the odds to understand he is a joint head of Jesus Christ. He is our problem. We raise our children as they are children of presidents and not children of kings. What is the difference, ladies and gentlemen? When President Obama was president, his children, Malaya and Shasha, had security, but it was limited because they have no line to the throne. The security what is on Prince Harry and Prince William far surpasses. Sasha had it because when Obama was president, Sasha can't get to the White House. Oh y'all, y'all getting ready to miss it. <laughs> when Obama was pre if God when Obama was president, and God forbid, if he was to die in his term, they would evict the family. But the next day, next day, God help me. But Prince William understand if my grandmama dies, I'm next in line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all don't know how much that just hurt me. I feel like shouting. You gotta raise your children to understand. I'm building this so you wouldn't inherit a future that is greater than you. Even though I'm still alive, it doesn't conclude me from warfare. Y'all missing this and some of you are so holy that you think because of who you are, you ain't gonna have opposition. <laughs> but because of who you are, it says the level of opposition you will live under says I want you to raise your son as Jezreel. I understand Jezreel has got to be careful because in Jezreel is Jezebel. You got to cover your sons that Jezebel don't give it to them. Oh God help me. Whenever there's a man of death me, there is a spirit that will try to reduce his prophetic mantle. You got to get your sons to think behind hips. There's, there's got to be a woman. There's got to be something in that woman's mind. I need to know is she going to push you in your next destiny? You ain't auditioning to get no video. You need a queen standing beside you. You got to get away from that spirit of Jezebel. Raise your sons to know that's Jezreel. Don't, don't start with me. I feel like preaching. <laughs> There's a king inside of them. <laughs> I'm in verse 4. He says, I'm bringing an end to the kingdom of Israel. He says, the structure that your children be living in, I'm getting ready to stop it. Huh? I'm getting ready to stop the cradle to prison pipelines. I'm getting ready to stop the trapping for black children to go into special education seven times faster. I'm getting ready to stop it to these teachers who are scared to teach so they just turn school into a daycare. I don't want my third grade coloring. I need him counting. I need him doing fractions. They got to be something that stretches them to another conclusion, another level. Hallelujah. I need you to tell your neighbor, the bow just broke. <laughs> don't touch nobody. This is something the bro just, the bow just broke. All kinds of stuff has been aimed at your child, but I said, I said the bow just broke. I'm waiting on 15 parents to wake up. I said the bow just broke. He getting ready to shift who been around your child. He getting ready to shift their friends, their relationships. He doing something to protect your child's self-esteem. The bow is broken. Hallelujah. Sorry, Bishop. I feel I feel God. I'm here. I need you to holler at the next con. Tell them the bow just broke. I don't know what your child been going through. I don't know the attack they've been under. The boat just been broken. God said, I'm getting ready to set up a new way that your child finances to be in order. The boat is getting ready to be broken. They getting ready to get their priorities in order. Your child ain't going to be living off you for the rest of your life. God said, if you give me glory, the boat. It's broken. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 1 verse 6 that Gomer conceives again and the time 
We have a daughter. The daughter's name is Lil Rama, which means there's no mercy. This is pre-Calvary, ladies and gentlemen, so this time they don't have the benefit of the cross. What I'm getting ready to say to you is going to throw some of you off, but I got to tell you anyway, that the demo demographic and the greatest danger is our daughters. Y'all don't like me today, but when you come to church, so much of our focus has been on our sons at the ne neglect of our daughters. But God says, I need you to cry for mercy that God will cover daughters today. He said, I'm extending mercies on daughters today so they didn't, so they don't pick the wrong man. I'm extending mercies on daughters so they don't compromise values and their integrity. Extending mercy to daughters so they will, through, they will, will think through consequences of decisions. I'm extending mercies to daughters so they don't get caught up in trends, caught up in what the crowd is doing. Lord, send mercy says I'm getting ready to do something for your child because your son's don't know they're supposed to be kings and your sons don't realize and your daughters don't realize they're supposed to have mercy. That's for Israel. I'm in verse number seven and I'm going to my seat, but I'm doing something. I'm gonna do something for Judah because Israel is rejecting me because they went after Saul. Son, but Judah, Judah said David, come be our king. We want our worshipers to be in charge of us. I gotta tell you, everybody in church is either in one or two kingdoms. You are either a part of Israel, a part of the system, or you are a part of Judah. That says God. I'm praising you because I'm believing you're going to do something for my child. Oh, y'all, I didn't come to play church today, but I, I wonder, is there anybody here who said, God, pay the rent later. Oh, God, give me a raise later. Bless me with a car later. Do something for my child. And I need, I feel like preaching of some worshipers in the room that can understand. Come on, musicians, by faith. Lord, I'm giving you glory because I remember the stuff I used to do. But I gotta say, if it had not been for you that was on my side, I don't know where I would be. I got to get out of here. My bed is calling my name. Say, neighbor, I'm used to reserve, but my child's future is on the line. Say, neighbor, do you know how bad the enemy want my child? The enemy tried to get me, but he couldn't get me, get me, so he's trying to get my child, but I'm getting ready to give God glory, because I believe by faith there's a hedge that's a protection around my children, I need somebody here early this morning would you give God glory even now like you believe by faith Lord do it so be not dismayed whatever be tired God will take care of you y'all I got to go but I'm reminded of an old little girl who left church one Sunday morning, she went back home. She was running through the house. She went to her older brother and said, hey, bro, do you know Andy? The brother looked at her. He said, I don't know who Andy is. She said, never mind. She ran to the other room and asked her mama, do you know Andy? And she said, I don't know Andy. The little girl about 10 years old. She said, never mind. She ran down on the hall and went to her daddy's office. She said, daddy, do you know Andy? The daddy said, who in the world is her Andy? And he said, he better not be in my house. She said, never mind. The little girl ran downstairs. She started rearranging the pots. Started looking through the cabinets. Started playing with the toys and was tearing up everything. Until her brother, until her mother, until her father ran to the room and took care of their sailor. Who was Andy? She said, hey, Listening when the pastor preaching, the pastor said, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me that I'm his own. But daddy 
started laughing. She said, that ain't Andy. You talking about the Lord. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me, I am his own. He talking about, he pays my bills. And he get rid of my haters. And he turn it around. I got to go for one half. And a week ago, I was sold. The organ that I play for was in the hospital. I got to go wear it. I caught him on Facebook. He didn't answer. I caught this number. And his voice was soft. Lord have mercy. But when I talked to him, he said he was almost. He was almost out of here. He said the doctor sold him. He was almost out of here. He had been in the hospital for eight days. But I got to tell you, God stepped in and made a way that turned his life around. Won't he turn your life around? You can be on crack and he can turn your life around. Won't he turn it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he pay your bills? Won't he make a way? Won't he bring you out? I know he's all right. I've seen him work. Why are you trying to figure it out? Get out. Somebody shout, yeah. I know he's all right. 